Welcome back to the Pathway to Prayer. Today we're going to try for ourselves a little bit of what we've been learning in Psalm 109. And so I wanted to just think with you about try it number three on page 38. Because it says that when teaching his followers to pray and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors, Jesus encourages us to pay forward forgiveness as a simultaneous act from him to us to others who have committed an offense or a debt against us. So why do you think Jesus makes forgiveness such a key part of the most important prayer that he wants his followers to pray? So that verse actually comes out of Matthew 6, 11, and that is when he teaches them the Lord's Prayer, that that piece is in there, forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. You know, and it uses that word debt because that is the idea behind everything that I have ever done wrong, past, present, and future, has a debt attached to it. In a sense, it would be almost as if to say, that's wrong and somebody has to pay for this. And biblically speaking, that's true. But that's also where mercy comes in. Because you remember we talked about in the first video of this section that because God is good, he must deal with evil. Right? He must punish the bad things in the world. And I've got to admit, that's around me, but that's also in me. And yet, he delights to show mercy. That's one of his favorite things. And so, forgiveness through Jesus means that Jesus shows up, having done nothing wrong, says, Because of all these bad things, someone has to pay. And Jesus said, I will pay that penalty. That's what his death on the cross was for. That he said, I will be the one who takes the pain, who pays the penalty, so that you can receive forgiveness. So that your debt can be canceled. He doesn't say, I'll give you more time to pay it back. He doesn't say, I'll lower the debt a little bit. He says, I'll cancel it. I'll pay for it. And so then what he asks us to do is be willing to do that for others, to take the forgiveness that he's given us and pass that on. And so that's what comes through in that prayer, forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And I think that that helps me ultimately to think about the moment David finds himself in Psalm 109. Because the anger is raw, the anger is real, and what he's saying about his enemies might even be deserved. But when we bring that together with the heart of God for mercy, we realize that, If they reject forgiveness, then they're on their own. But that the mercy and forgiveness might be available to them too, just like it is for us. That what Jesus would teach in the New Testament, in fact, the chapter right before the Lord's Prayer, he also says, love your enemy. So that allows me to come back and I think pray a little bit like David does at the end of Psalm 109. He says, let my accusers be clothed with shame. Like, almost like let them realize how shameful what they've been doing is. Let them cover themselves with their own disgrace as with a mantle. Like, if that's their choice, I can't stop them. But then he says, I will greatly praise the Lord with my mouth. Yes, I will praise him among the multitude. For he shall stand at the right hand of the poor to save him from those who condemn him. Essentially, David decides to leave justice to God to leave mercy to God, and for himself to focus on worshiping God. And so for you and I, that means that I come back to this instruction from Christ in the Lord's Prayer to realize I need forgiveness too. I want my debt canceled, and God asks me to extend that to others. In fact, if you think about the list of things that David mentioned that his enemies did, lying, false accusation, hateful words or thoughts, uh, ignoring people when they're in need. You ever done any of those things? (laughs) I think I've done all of those things. I need mercy too. I need forgiveness too. And so I'd like to pray for us that way right now, for myself and for you. And then we're going to hear a song that maybe as you listen, you just think about those words because this song is based on the Lord's Prayer. If you're familiar with that prayer, you'll hear the words right in this song, and maybe it can speak to your heart a little bit today. So let's pray. 
Our Heavenly Father, I just first of all want to say thank you that you understand our anger, that we don't have to pretend we don't feel it, but that we can always bring it to you. God, I also want to say thank you for your mercy to me, for the times that I have probably deserved your wrath, and yet you have shown me forgiveness. Lord, I just ask for your strength, your patience, your gentleness, and your self-control that I might be able to extend that forgiveness to others the way you have to me. And I will pray that in the name of Jesus. Amen. Our Father in heaven Your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. We're singing holy, holy God almighty who was and is to come. You are worthy of every this day our daily bread and forgive us as we have forgiven and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil we're singing holy holy God almighty who was and is to come you are worthy of every glory forever Amen Amen Yours is the kingdom power and glory forever and ever Yours is the kingdom, power and glory forever and ever. Yours is the kingdom, power and glory forever and ever. Yours is the kingdom, power and glory. We're singing holy, holy God Almighty, who was and is to come. You are worthy of every glory. Forever We're singing holy, holy God Almighty Who was and is to come You are worthy of every glory Forever Amen Forever and ever, yours is the kingdom, power and glory, forever and ever. Yours is the kingdom, power and glory, forever and ever. Yours is the kingdom, power and glory, forever and ever. Amen.